Welcome back. My name is Kara Michelle and I'm here to help you live your truth. So today we are diving into day three of A Course in Miracles. If you are new here, you can check my other videos, watch day one and day two first and then catch up. If you are with me and you're on day three, then let's dive in. So day three is all about atonement and miracles. And there were a few parts in here that really jumped out for me. Let's just take a siren break. So lesson three had a lot of powerful things in it and um, I'm going to try and keep this short and to the point. But one of the things I really loved is that it talks about restoring recognition of your original state which is your true divine self, when you realize that and you remember that and you recognize that, everything changes. And it says to listen to the voice of God or the higher power and learn to undo error and act to correct it. So it's all about letting go of the errors, the mistakes, the past, and correcting it and taking the path back to your true self, to the miracles, to the atonement, to what's possible for you and what you truly are. Another quote is talking about um, heaven and earth shall pass away, quote, means that they will not continue to exist as separate states. And this is because they are one and the same. When you are truly living in alignment and you know the true purpose and the meaning of this world and what is going on here, what we're here to do, when you've connected back to yourself and your source, then you are going to realize that heaven and earth are one and the same. There is no such difference, there's no disconnect, it's all connected and it's all one thing. It says that I am the only one who can perform miracles indiscriminately because I am the atonement. You have the role which I will dictate to you. Ask me and I, ask me which miracles you should perform um, and basically I will carry it out. So this is also where it comes into prayer and the power of prayer and the power of asking for something instead of feeling like we have to do it on our own um, and letting the ego control us and tell us that we have um, control, we have enough control to manipulate the world. This is saying, ask for help, pray for help, ask me to give you the sign or tell you what miracles to form, which direction to take, and I will give you those answers, um, which is a, a great book by Abraham Hicks called Ask and It Is Given. So I like that kind of correlation really about realizing that um, all you need to do is ask and there is a higher power, there is support here. And this other part says, recognize your errors and choose to abandon them by following my guidance. So by trusting in this higher power and this source being, you can release this need to um, carry everything and really beat yourself up, put pressure on all the things that have gone wrong or that didn't work out the way you wanted them to or that have made you feel lesser than, let go of those. Um, this beautiful quote here too um, from page 10 is, spirit is in a state of grace forever. Your reality is only spirit. Therefore, you are in a state of grace forever. And in my own experience, my own connection to spirit over the last few years, there was so much disconnect, so much stress, anxiety, fear, and struggle when I wasn't connected to my true self. And I was searching for everything externally and just getting hit by struggle after struggle. And it wasn't until I connected to my true self through meditation, through energy work, spiritual healing, um, different shamanic journeys and stuff like that, where I really got down to the core root of myself and dream travel. That was a big one. I love dreaming and conscious dreaming. Um, you can see some of my other videos where I talk about that. But when I connected to spirit and when I'm in my day-to-day -day life feeling most connected to spirit. That is a state of grace. It's a state of bliss and alignment and everything just feels good and it's fun and it's working out. And that is what we truly are. But it's the society, it's the pressures, it's the um, corruption and the forced things that are trying to keep us under control, keep us from connecting to our true power 
that's what really keeps people from living divine bliss and state of grace all the time. Another amazing quote, see this is just a great one. So you respond to what you perceive and as you perceive, so shall you behave. So the golden rule asks you to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That means that the perception of both must be accurate. And this is a huge one because a lot of times we do unto others what we want back. Maybe you're a very kind person, person and you're doing everything you can for other people and then you're not really getting that reciprocated. It's not a reflection of you, it's a reflection of them because they are only acting from their perception. So if their perception is that life is hard or I don't have time or I need to focus on myself and kind of be selfish, if their perception is limited, if they had a really hard upbringing and they don't know love, that is what they are going to do unto other people. They're putting that out there. That doesn't mean you're not worthy of better. It means that's all they know. That's all they can perceive and all they can give off. So when you treat someone really well and they don't reciprocate it, it has nothing to do with you being worthy. It has everything to do with them not knowing different or better. Um, and that's a whole other topic as well. But I really found that a great way to look at it, to realize that we all do have our own perceptions. And yet hopefully most of us in this world are acting as a way of do unto others what we want back so hopefully that means we are giving out good good energy we are being caring and compassionate but a lot of times that's also based on our own perception our own standards and beliefs that have been created in our life so we can't expect everyone to be at this certain level at the same time we can hope that they get there by doing the work by creating awareness, by working on themselves and doing personal development and healing to see that they can be better and that there are ways to grow and evolve and there are ways to kind of up level and become even kinder, better people um, instead of staying stuck just with what they know and what they learned. So really cool. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, and then it just goes on to talk about miracles a little bit and that you might not always see what it's bringing to you, how it affects people, and you might not know why, and maybe you're going to do something that becomes a miracle that wasn't asked of you, but it's just kind of saying, like, miracles are good, let them be, don't feel like you need to know why they're happening or what you need to do, just trust, listen, ask for guidance, follow what your intuition or your spirit, follow your calling, and know that there is something there to support you, and um, realize that there's no account of the magnitude of the miracle itself, because the concept of size exists on a plane that is itself unreal, and that was kind of discussed on day two when it came to time as well, and really just understanding there is no concept of that, especially on the spiritual plane. Time doesn't exist. There is no matter or there's no nothing to measure by, I mean. Um, there's no way to measure. So we can't call it a big miracle, a small miracle. There are no labels to that. It, um, it is what it is and everything is possible. So ask and ye shall receive. <laughs> uh, let's go to the lesson for today. So lesson three is carrying over from the last few days. I do not understand anything I see in this room, on the street, from this window, or in this place, wherever your environment is. So let's just backtrack to yesterday's really quickly. It was, I have given everything I see in this room all the meaning that it has for me. So yesterday we were applying all our meaning, all our perceptions, all our understanding of what we saw. Remember the pen, every single memory and belief and perception I have, I'm applying that subconsciously when I see a pen. But now we're saying, I do not understand anything I see here. So we're kind of looking around and we're going, I do not understand anything I see in this pen. I do not understand anything I see in that lamp or that table or that plant and it's taking the step back to realize that 
our knowledge is very limited. It is very um, experience based and it's totally about what our perception is. So our perception isn't always right. Our perception is very limited and it's very based on only what we know. And so when you realize that, you realize that you don't actually in fact know anything. Like we understand so, so little about our lives, about the things around us, about how they work, what they do. We're very in the dark when it comes to the true understanding of these things. And this is to just help you see, um, see how you respond as well. It says on here, don't, don't feel like this isn't about judgment and it's not about making yourself feel stupid or small by any means. It's more about realizing that like, wow, we really don't understand. And like, there's so much more to this than I could ever understand or comprehend. And kind of maybe a humbling, that's what I look at it as. Taking the ego out, realizing we don't actually know everything that we think we do about the world around us and what's going on and taking a more humble stance. So you can do this a few times throughout the day I do not understand anything I see in this room and um, let me know in the comments what you think about this lesson and how that makes you feel if anything comes up for you. Some people might be triggered. They might be immediately feeling like, I know how this works and I know what that's about and um, maybe you're not even saying it in that way but you're just like, I know that, like I know this. That's great but I think the whole point of this lesson is just to realize that there are still parts that we don't know everything about. So realizing that, being okay to, to see the world with new eyes, to, to open up and see that there is more than you've probably perceived in the past and take that stance. So I will see you tomorrow for day number four.